Block, the owner of Buy Now, Pay Later Business Afterpay, is going to sack more than 1,000 staff in an effort to rein in costs. Now, some of those job losses are expected to come here in Australia. Block paid $39 billion, remember, for Afterpay just a little over 18 months ago. I just found a lot of um, silos, a lot of redundancy, uh, a lot of um, kind of a, a lack of desire for uh, teams to, to work together. So I think a lot of what's been holding us back is cultural. That was Jack Dorsey on the investor call, of course, also the former founder of Twitter as well. Now, this all comes as there's been a sharp reduction in sales using buy now, pay later, with question marks about its use and efficiency in global markets. Brad Kelly is the Managing Director of Consultancy Payment Services and joins me now. Brad, many thanks for your time. Just take me first off to this. It would seem now that the boom in buy now, pay later has come right off in a big way, that people now appear, according to the facts, appear to be using it less. Uh, that's exactly what's happening, Ross. And, and what we're seeing is the actual, uh, the actual performance of buy now, pay later has never actually been very good. So the reality is none of these companies have ever made a profit. There's been a lot of PR spin and a lot of bluster. And I think the reality is now coming home to roost and Mr Dorsey's having to clean up a, a hell of a mess that he's got on his hands. OK, well, let's have a look at this. Some of the st stats and surveys show some of the monthly spending based on people's habits and the amount of use they would have. A credit card a person might use, on average, $1,600 a month. A debit card, a little over $1,000. But buy now, pay later. Depending on the number of transactions, three to $400. So the level of transactions is much, much lower as well. Correct. So, look, payments is a, is a game of volume and value and ubiquity. And, and these businesses have neither of that. And the, the graph you just showed is a perfect example that we use credit cards. We never cut up our credit cards. The numbers never went south as they were predicted. The amount of cards in market did slow and, and slightly retract. But we do more transactions on credit cards now than we ever had. Debits is the biggest growth area. We'd 70 per cent of our transactions are on debit. When you compare this across buy now, pay later, they're doing one or two transactions a month on average for a consumer. The consumer's spending 150 bucks. You can't run a business on this. It's too small. So this is what got me. The customer spending, the payment data, showing that debit cards, $520 billion. Visa MasterCards, $325 billion. Cash from ATM withdrawals, $104 billion. Amex and diners, even them, which... People don't see it much these days. $85 billion. Buy now, pay later, $17 billion. Yeah, it's, it's less than 0.5 of 1%. I mean, and don't give up on Diners and Amex yet. Their businesses are growing at 25%. And uh, Diners Club probably won't be with us for much longer. But Amex's business is shooting the lights out. So this notion that, um, that it's, uh, we're all cutting up our credit cards and buy now, pay later is the future is completely complete nonsense. But one of the things that came out of the block earnings call last night, which has led to these job cuts, is that it seems that buy now, pay later in overseas markets has not been at all successful. If there's one market where it's grabbed a little foothold, it's here in Australia. But in other parts of the world... It's, it's been obliterated by, by the debit cards and the credit cards. Well, and PayPal and Apple pay later in the US. I think this is why Dorsey's getting rid of so many people in the US is because 50% of the market's already gone to PayPal and, and Apple pay later. I mean, that's, that's just evaporated. Plus, there's some headwinds with regulation. So New York and New Mexico, um, it's a state-based regulatory system in the US, they've already called it out, and that pulls Afterpay and Zip and Klarna out of those markets. If California decided to do that, California is the sixth or seventh biggest economy in the world. If California goes along with the other two states, it's arguable he doesn't have a viable business in the world's biggest market, the United States. So back to Australia he comes and he's going to have to somehow make this work with the, with the Reserve Bank allowing surcharges and regulatory uh, intervention coming for him too. I've got to tell you, it's really fascinating to watch this because this notion that Afterpay was going to become this global giant, right now, that's coming back to heel. Brad Kelly, good to have you in the program today. Thank you, Ross.